Welcome to this video. The purpose of this video is to give you some ideas and some pointers to do blog number three for uh, Econ 201, which is microeconomics. So in this blog post, what you're going to do is you're going to talk about elasticity and utility related to your market that's related to your decision, right? So in the first blog post, you talked about your decision, your big decision. Blog post number two, we defined or we pinpointed a market that relates to that decision and we talked about the demand and supply and equilibrium of that market. Now blog number three what you're going to do is you're going to stick with that same market uh, or and even maybe narrow it down a little bit. If you had a couple markets that you talked about in blog post number two you might even narrow it down a little bit just for one market dealing with blog number three. And there's three points that we're going to cover. One is the relative price elasticity of demand Number two is relative price elasticity of supply. And the third one is uh, personal utility optimization. So let's talk about the first one. First one here is relative price elasticity of demand. And what you're going to talk about in that is you're going to say, okay, the demand in my market, is it relatively elastic? Meaning if there's a change in price, is the demand going to go uh, up or down a lot, right? A relative uh, large amount. And why is that? So is there, for example, substitution effect happening? So for so if uh, in the situation of, let's say, soft drinks, colas, for example, Coca-Cola and Pepsi could be considered a pretty close substitutes, right? Um, by some, maybe not by others, but they could be. And so if the price of Coke goes way up, uh, Pepsi definitely is going to uh, have that effect, right, that there's going to be more demand of Pepsi. And so the two demands for Pepsi and Coke are going to be maybe a little, uh, a little more on the elastic side because there is substitutes. There is more elasticity of demand because there's something else to go to, right? You don't have to just kind of get the price increase for the Coke and say, ah, I'm going to keep drinking Coke no matter what price it is, right? You're going to say, maybe I should switch over to Pepsi. So that makes it more elastic. Uh, on the other side, if you have something that's more inelastic where there's really not substitutes, then you're going to be saying, you know, it doesn't matter what the price is, I need it. Uh, like for the, in the case of insulin, right? Where no matter what, you're going to need the insulin. There's really no a uh, good substitute for that necessarily. Wealth could also have a uh, impact on demand. Just go back and look at the chapter and and those determinants of elasticity of demand. Weave those in, right? Elastic relative price elasticity of supply. Uh, the determination of supply is going to be more uh, on the timeline, right? So if it's in the short run, those that supply are going to be more inelastic. So that they they are not going to be able to supply a large uh, a, a large swing in quantity one way or the other. In the long run, it becomes more elastic because in the long run uh, you could hire more people, you could build more equipment and plant infrastructure and and build and uh, create more, or maybe even less. Right? Uh, you could lay people off. You could. You could sell plants and equipment. That happens in the long run, though. So depending on your specific market, talk about how time would affect supply. There's also input pricing structures. So sometimes as uh, for supply, right, if it becomes more uh, elastic, if inputs, quantity in, of inputs uh, to look to make, for example, if you're going to make a larger quantity and you're buying in larger batches of uh, inputs into your product, you could actually uh, get lower pricing overall. So that becomes that makes it more elastic, right? So you're going to be able to supply even more because uh, of larger um, economies of scale, right? The effects of the economies of scale, having more that you're making and the average cost per product that you're making is going to be lower. If you're on uh you're if you're in an industry where the average cost doesn't go down as you produce more, then maybe there's it becomes more inelastic.
Okay, now we're talking, now the third point is going to be personal utility optimization. This refers to your personal choice, your own utils. You're going to assign your amount of utility that you're receiving from the product or service. Your own utility, depending on uh, how many, right? So you're going to include the diminishing uh, marginal uh, utility concept into this. So as you have one, say for example, you're you're working right you're going to apply the concept of leisure versus work time into this and as you work more and more you the utility of the other the option which is leisure time is going to be higher than work right than the extra money you could be making so it depends on the market you're doing uh but you you got to assign utilities based on your preferences as you consume more of that product or service you're also going to talk about the options based on your budget, right? So if if it's work, then your option is to have leisure time, right? If it's a product like a cell phone, then your other option is going to be, I don't know, a, a different kind of cell phone maybe or, or maybe something else you could do with your money instead of buying a new cell phone. Maybe you'll go with the old one uh, with a broken screen and you're going to use your money instead to purchase more, I don't know, food or buy rent or, or maybe it's your car you're going to spend money on, something else, right? Or you're going to save it. So, so what is the best mix for you? So that's kind of the issues related to utility and utility optimization because really what you're, you're asking here is what is the best? Where do I get the most utility, right? What's Where's my most uh, satisfaction? What What is the mixture? So here's kind of the structure possibly that you might have for your third blog post. Paragraph number one, you're going to tell us what you're going to tell us. You're going to define the markets and what economic ideas you're gonna, going to apply. Like, like we just talked about, those ideas we just talked about. Second paragraph, you're going to do the first one. You're going to talk about relative elasticity of demand in your market why it is what it is. Is it more elastic? Is it unitary elastic or is it inelastic? You got to pick which one it is. Third paragraph, what's the relative price elasticity of supply in your market? Is it elastic? Is it unitary elastic or is it inelastic and why? Fourth paragraph, uh, how do you define your personal utility for the product or service and how does your choice give you the most utility of all possible choices, right? So the mixture of what you picked, how does it give you the uh, best total utility? And then number five or paragraph five, you're just gonna sum up your ideas and conclude, right? So you're just uh, going to tell us again what you told us, right? So hopefully this helps you, gives you a little structure to deal with as you're going into blog number three. And I look forward to reading your blog post. Have a good day, bye.